Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's word to you today. Now today is Friday, praise God. And all week we've been sharing thoughts from the word of God that has, I know, has really been a blessing to you. Praise God. Now, we are going to continue what we've been talking about concerning the judgment of God. Before we go into today's broadcast, as the Lord has commanded us, can we call for that daily bread? Join me right now in faith as we declare, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, like I've always told you, anytime we make this demand from the Lord, expect a miracle today praise god expect a miracle today because it will surely come thank you lord jesus now you know we've been talking about the way god reasons the way god thinks and i was sharing with us what god said in isaiah he said my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. That's in Isaiah chapter 55. And from verse, I love the way the Lord put it there. Verse 7. Isaiah 55 and verse 7. Now watch this. He said, let's start from verse 6. He says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is nearest. Meaning, do it now. Praise God. Do it now. Now he says, Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. I love that word, abundantly pardon. What does it mean, abundantly pardon? I told you, because God, God says, I'm sitting to judge the affairs of men. And I told you, I said, listen, when you hear judgment, it's not something for you to be terrified about except you have been deliberately participating in evil. But then, even the things you have been ignorantly doing. Now that's why he says here, he says, let the wicked forsake his ways. See, the wicked man is not the one who's going around looking for, or just not, not just the one who's going about looking for who to kill or steal from. See, a wicked man also is a man who have not allowed himself to deliberately walk in the ways of God. See that now? So, for example, if you don't tithe, you are wicked. Now, we will say this thing, like, what are you trying to talk about? Yes, you are. Because now, you are going against God's ways, where finances is concerned. And then secondly, you are depriving someone from receiving the blessing of God. See that now? Now, you see why it is wicked. Now, I taught you how to tie it here. You know, one of the days, a few days ago, I shared that with you. Now, if that is true and we function with God to distribute his resources to as, I mean, those that God leads us to that I need, now, it simply tells you by, that when you walk in your own ways, which is against the way of the Lord, what's going on? You are wicked. See? So now he says, let that person who's been walking in his own ways, who's been trying to establish his own principles, trying to establish, which is against the word of God, he says, let him forsake that his way. Let him forsake that project that he's doing. Praise God. Stop it. Forsake it. Turn away from it. And he says... And the unrighteous man should forsake his thoughts. 
The unrighteous man thinks he tries to figure out things by himself. And he doesn't submit his mind to the mind of Christ. He says, forsake it. Stop it. Abandon that project. That thing you're thinking you're going to achieve your own way. Abandon it. It's an unrighteous thought. Praise God. He says, and let him return. See, repent, return. Let him return to the Lord. And he will have mercy. God is going to have mercy on him. And then, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Why? For my thoughts are not your thoughts. This is God speaking. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now, when you read this, he's not just telling you, forget it. My thoughts are so far from your thoughts that you can't catch me up. No, when he says this, remember, he says, let him turn to the Lord. How does he turn to the Lord? How do you forsake your way and turn to the Lord? How do you forsake your thought and turn to the Lord? He is talking about, do you abandon what you are used to? And then now, yielding your mind to the thoughts and the ways of God. Is that possible? 100% possible. So, okay, so how do I do that? See, every time you shift your mind and place it on God's thoughts, this will happen to you. You will increase in intelligence. You will increase in character. You will increase, because you see, God's word pulls us to him. His word pulls us to him. As how do I know God's thoughts? His thoughts are revealed in his words. So there is no way you would say, I want to walk by God's thoughts, and then you don't know his word. Now, when you read the Bible, for example, you, you to a great extent will begin to learn how God communicates. You will begin to see his mind. You will begin to see his thoughts. For example, there is no doubt that when you, I mean, to think about it, there is no doubt that God is a miracle worker. So what does that mean? Everything God is involved with, it's just so easy to find miracles in it. So when God is telling you to do something, now it's wrong for you to start trying to figure out how am I going to do this thing? If you are conversant with his thoughts, you will know I love, you know. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When Moses, when God sent Moses to go down to Egypt and bring words to Pharaoh, I love something God said to Moses. He said, certainly I will be with you. See that? He said, certainly I will be with you. Meaning I'm not just sending you to march there alone and figure things out yourself. I will surely be with you. Be with you to do what? To tell you exactly what to say. To tell you exactly what to do. I normally say this, that my best scripture, one of my best scripture is Hebrews. When he says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So that you will boldly say, Hebrews chapter 13 and from verse 5, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. So that you will boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I shall not fear what man can do to me. Now, that's a promise that God has given. But the question is, what is he doing with you? He is with you to tell you what to do. So when we talk about the judgments of God, now I've shown you several things. And, and today, let me see how quickly I can share one thought with you about God's judgment. Now, God doesn't judge by the appearance, just like man does. God judges based on truth. God judges based on truth. Now, sometimes man does not know truth. And so man's judgment, which is after the appearance, most times is faulty. 
For example, we all knew that Peter denied Jesus. Yes, Peter denied Jesus. But then, have you realized that Jesus wasn't mad at him? And Jesus wasn't angry at him? The reason is because, now what we see from this end is that Peter came under pressure and he denied Jesus. But then you, you remember when Jesus rose from the dead and he met Mary Magdalene. One of the first things he said to her, he says, go tell my disciples and Peter to meet me up. And when they showed up, he didn't start by rebuking Peter. He said, look, all of you, you all disappointed me, including you, Peter, a whole you. Peter, you that I trusted the most. You, you? No, he didn't. Because he didn't judge the way we judge. Now, the truth about Peter was this. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, you know that's why I already told you this at the beginning of the week. That the Holy Spirit must be your teacher. How does he teach? You first of all go to him and say, Lord. See, when you read things in the Bible and they don't really add up. Don't just stay there and say, this Bible is confusing. No, you have a teacher. You take it to him and ask him, Lord, what's going on here? See? Now, you remember Peter. God had spoken to Peter and told him, hey, Jesus had told Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan has desire to have you. And his, his desire and what he wants to do is to sift you as wheat. But Jesus said, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. Okay, what was Jesus trying to communicate to Peter? And then, when, they were, when, when, when the time was approaching, Peter said to Jesus one day, he said, look, I will go anywhere they, with you. And Jesus looked at him and said, you. He says, listen, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Okay. Now, was Peter a weak man that would deny Jesus? The answer is no. Peter was not a weak man. Peter was not a fearful man. Oh, Peter was never a fearful man. You remember when they came to arrest Jesus in the garden? Peter brought out his sword and he cut off someone's ears. And guess what? He was ready to go for the next one. Now, Jesus knew. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Heaven knew that Peter, being left to himself, was going to bring destruction to himself. And that's the truth. So, in order to save Peter from himself, God had to release Satan, the adversary, and give him permission over his life. But then, when God did that, God did that with a timing. See that? God did that with a timing. That's why Jesus told him, before the cock crows, you would have denied me three times. He wasn't just telling Peter that, look, you are so terrible that before the cock crowed, you would have denied me three times. Meaning, the short time between now and when the cock is going to crow. No, that's not what Jesus was saying. Jesus was giving Peter an indication that Satan is going to have you at a moment. But then the moment the cock crows, he will lose his grip over your life. So God actually permitted Satan to have power over Peter at that moment. Now that was the moment Jesus was taken into the judgment hall. See that now? Now why was that important at that moment? Because that's when they are going to look for witnesses to testify for or against Jesus. Now it was, it was judgment. And Peter being who he was, if he had been allowed into that judgment hall and, and, and they are looking for witnesses, I tell you the truth, Peter was going to stand up for Jesus and say, look, you guys are doing something wrong here. And they would have asked him, 
What do you say of this man? Guess what Peter would have said? He, this man here that you guys are toying with, he is a Christ, the son of the living God. Now that's what he had said concerning Jesus before. That was a conviction that was in Peter. I know Peter said that twice. When Jesus asked, who do, you mean, who do you say that I am? He answered that way. Then the other time in the book of John, when the Bible says, when the, many of his disciples stopped walking with him, Jesus turned to the twelve and said, will you also go? Peter says, no, you have the word of life. And we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So I tell you the truth, Peter would have spoken up that day and say he is the Christ. That would have been a blasphemous word. That, those words would have been blasphemous. And I tell you the high priest would have called for Peter's execution immediately for blasphemy. Calling a man the Christ. Now God knew this. And because of all what God had placed on Peter's life and destiny, Peter had to be saved for that moment. Now you see, concerning Peter, God had to take a judgment to let Satan have his way over his life for a moment. But, but God also put the barrier that Satan cannot cross. So he protected Peter and fixed those barriers and set a time into it. So you on this side say, oh, can you imagine Peter denied Jesus? No. Heaven says, that was part of the plan. Praise God. That's judgment. That's, that, you know, that's God for you. So do you mean that God will just give us over to the devil? We'll talk about that next week because my time is up today. Praise God. Listen, guys, this weekend I pray for you that the Spirit of God will carry you and help you fulfill the destiny that he has ordained for you. I pray for you that nothing will prevent you from entering into God's rest for your life in this month of November. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare right now you are making significant progress by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Have the best weekend ever. Hey, listen, God's going to supply everything you need. He surely will. And guess what? It's according to his riches in glory. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.